these players numerous accomplishments. Only got four slots for each of them, but they exceed that multiple, of course. Penny Billinger is an international champion in the juniors division, as well as having that, again, Vancouver regional champion. So he's still performing in the seniors division, looking to get an international win as a senior. And how many times do you see on the accomplishments list, every single one, champion, 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 and champion at all these uh, different events in uh, different age divisions? Yeah, the, these two have champion written all over them, all over their resumes. And one of them is going to add another champion title to their resume now. All right, so it looks like we are getting set up and ready at this point. Looks like we are just making sure everything is set up. All of our players are getting ready. It's going to be this ancient box deck up against Charizard EX. There are a ton of really interesting inclusions here. We saw a little bit of Brent Tonneson playing a deck very similar to this. It is playing that Reggie Ilecki with Ooh. that electromagnetic sonar to bring back some of those trainer cards from the discard pile, as well as that hero's cape to boost the HP up. It is very interesting because we did have an interview with Tord, of course, where he mentioned that this was a card that he was considering himself, but then he, noticed he decided to not play it because deciding that against control, Luxray is almost like a counter to Regieleki because it can just keep discarding, you know, the thing you bring back over and over. But uh, in this instance, no, uh, no Luxray to worry about, so it's going to be interesting to see if that comes up. See these hands filled up. Looks like Gabriel did have a mulligan, so we'll give one extra card to Benny on the setup, and we'll see this dynamic evolves between both of our competitors. Surprise cards will very shortly go out. We'll see if there's any key pieces, something like the A specs. Of course, we saw in our juniors division finals how having some of those pieces prized can really impact the dynamic of this match. Yeah, absolutely. Even though in that instance, the one who had the, you know, the worst prizes ended up uh, managing to win, but uh, that, that just goes to show the skill of the player, right? That's uh, what it all comes down to. You've got to play around the best around the resources you don't have access to, and I'm sure both these players will be well within their capabilities to do exactly that. Tension is building, storylines are developing. This is going to be a match for the ages. There's a lot of early pressure here that Gabriel can put on. We saw a lot of just the straight Rory Moon decks coming out, but there are also something like the Coridon in this deck, something like Fluttermane may not be too relevant, but it's all gonna be about counting, all about those ancient cards in the discard pile. So we'll take a look at these prizes, see if there's anything too, too relevant. There is that Rotom V in the prizes for Benny and that A spec for Gabrielle, that Awakening Drum. I think besides that, things are going to be okay, and I think we're going to have a good match. Yeah, that Tambor do Despertar there. Yeah, you're going to see the lovely Portuguese uh, A specs again. Like we were talking yesterday, always cool to see these uh, alternative language uh, you know, cards on stream. You get to see what cards are called all over the world. But, look, but again, other than that, not too bad to work with. And that is an early prize card as well, so hopefully Benny should be, or rather, um, Gabriel should be able to take that early on to make use of it. We're all set up. The stage is set. And I think we're ready to get things started. Our seniors division finals here at the Europe International Championships. Let's get this action kicked out underway. And it looks like Gabrielle will be going first in this instance. Starts off with one of those uh, Roaring Moons. Now, we've seen a few different variants of this Roaring Moon deck being played. This is one that is playing that Coridon. So it is a, yeah, a single prize focus here very much. Starting things off with an ultra straight away and getting a fighting engine into the discard pile. Yeah, we'll get to check the deck out and of course, Getting that powerful Radiant Pokemon, Radiant Greninja. It's not here to attack like we saw in the Juniors Division Finals, just in this deck for that Concealed Cards. Powerful ability to just discard an energy card from your hand, draw two cards, and be as a sort of support engine here for Gabriel. It's not as powerful as something like Quick Search, but it's a lot less of an investment and allows Gabriel to play more of these ancient cards of course, Vengeful Fletching allowing you to deal 70 damage plus 10 for each ancient card that includes Pokemon and trainer cards in your discard pile. Really, that big number towards the end of the game is going to be 200, or rather 26 of those ancient cards as 330 damage will be just enough to knock out Charizard EX. Yeah, and Gabriel's playing enough ancient cards to get there with this uh, you know, single prize ancient focus. You have the Flutter Mains, you have the Coridons, the Roaring Moons, you have, you know, the Urban Vessel we talked about. Oh, of course, that's a, just a generically useful card, but it does say ancient on it. So just by playing the Urban Vessel, you get uh, well, 10 more damage in there with the Vengeance Fletching, which is going to be very, very useful the more those that he plays. And we'll have to keep our eyes out for that Awakening Drum as well. Of course, being a super powerful card draws you a card for each ancient Pokemon you have in play, but it's also an ancient card. So while being an A spec, while being a way to draw, it does boost your damage up. We'll just see the Radiant Greninja get grabbed. Concealed Cards is now online. 
As long as Gabriel has some more energy cards, can start filling the hand up and looking to get that turn to attack. It is the only non-ancient Pokemon that Gabriel plays, and you know, what a good one to play it is, of course. That phenomenal uh, Conceal card ability, and uh, Moonlight Shuriken not going to be of great use here, but just setting up your discard pile, drawing more cards, and uh, enabling you to use that Professor Sardis Vitality later on. Absolutely wait, worth its weight in gold in this deck. Looks like does have a Pokestop Stadium card in hand as well, so I think it's just thinking about how to sequence this out. And there we go, we see Nest Ball as well. So this can get one of these ancient Pokemon into play, and it will just be another one of those Roaring Moons. So for the time being, foregoing, grabbing that Coridon, it's pretty good early on in the game. It can hit for Primordial Beatdown, of course, does 30 damage for each ancient Pokemon you have in play. But later on in the game, once you're dealing with these bigger EX Pokemon, Usually Roaring Moon's just going to be a little bit better of an attacker. Yeah, especially because you know, later on your bench isn't really quite as big, of course, that Coridon does do 30 times the amount of ancient Pokemon you have in play, and the later you go in the game, the more of your ancient Pokemon are knocked out, so the less it's really going to be able to do. So, yeah, going for a Roaring Moon focus here early on, maybe going to switch with Pivot to Coridon in the mid game, and then finish off in the late game with some really, really big uh, Vengeful Fletchings from the Roaring Moon. We actually see that Poke Gear 3.0. Look at the top seven cards of the deck, but no supporter card there for Gabriel's just going to have to look at those cards, shuffle the deck back. The last piece here for Gabriel is do we see an energy attachment to one of these Pokemon? That way, next turn, there's no need to play a supporter like Professor Sada's Vitality. And there it is, energy on this Roaring Moon, and passing the turn back over to Benny. We'll have access to playing a supporter card this turn, maybe some of those Buddy Buddy Poppin. Speaking of which, will be the first card Benny plays. We can search his deck for two basic Pokemon with 70 HP or less, Put them onto the bench. Yeah, uh, Buddy Buddy Poppin, a huge boon to so many different uh, setup decks. Uh, you know, being able to in the Lost Zone decks to uh, get out the Comfays and in Champau and in Charmander, just being able to get your Charmanders, get your Frigibaxes. It is, uh, yeah, one of the most impactful cards from Temporal Forces for sure. Really should, it really should have been in our bracket, I think. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to reflect on that a little bit, yeah. but the future is now, present is here. I think Benny will very quickly take note of that Rotom V being in the prize cards. It's a great way to end your turn off with something like an instant charge ability. I think just thinking about what other cards are available in the hand. It start that Charmander. It does have uh, that attack for two fire energy. It does do 40 damage. Uh, maybe sometimes you can get in there with the heat tackle Charmander that we do see. Get benched off of the Buddy Buddy Poffin to hit this Roaring Moon for 30 damage. And then no matter next turn, if there's a booster energy or a prize card taken, it will take the knockout. But... I mean, the way that Gabriel set this board up, the way that the board is looking, it looks like Gabriel would be the first person to take a prize card, which should be expected in this matchup. It is. And now, I've got to say, looking at Benny's hand, uh, a lot of the Buddy, Buddy Puffin is great. There actually isn't that much of a great follow-up here. It looks like she's going to have to be a boss's orders. Yeah, there's no supporters in the hand or anything like that. It's actually a little bit rough for Benny right now. Yeah, Benny had a Nest Ball in hand, and that would have been an excellent opportunity to put Rotom V into play, but it's just going to have to be a boss's orders onto this Pokemon, and there is an Explorer's Guidance. Gabriel will look at the top six cards of his deck, choose two to keep to the hand, and discard the rest. And looking at this deck, there's really only a few ways to switch out of the active spot. I think there's actually only just that one penny as a way to Ooh. pivot out. So with how things are standing right now, it seems that this boss's orders on Benny's side, though a valuable resource to be used, may have bought him a turn at this at this point in the game. And it's the kind of way you have to do sometimes, right? You recognize that your back is against the wall, your setup isn't great, you just go for the boss's order just to buy yourself a turn uh, more than anything else, and uh, kind of paying off here for Benny, as we're, and now Gabriel's kind of denied that first early knockout. Yeah, but I think this is okay for Gabriel. I think he has an understanding that Benny's hand is most likely pretty poor, maybe holding on to some rare candy combinations, but Gabriel can just take this turn to comfortably play that Explorer's Guidance, build the, the discard pile up with more ancient cards, start to be dealing some big damage on the following turn. We'll have to see where this energy goes. Could definitely put it onto this active Roaring Moon just to make sure that next turn there's really nothing that can stop him from using that attack as we will see Pokestop. And this is a Ooh. big time hit. Does get rid of one of those Roaring Moon, which is honestly okay. You're just boosting your damage up a little bit more, but more importantly, does find two of those Poke Gear. Yeah, there's a little bit of a tricky thing though here because with Gabriel putting down that Pokestop, that does give Benny a few more chances to maybe the Bale himself out. He does top the Iono! It's a big find, I think. Now the choice for Benny is maybe looking for an Ultra Ball here off of this Pokestop. Does have Rare Candy in hand. Do we see Ultra Ball? No. no, that's not a terrible discard. That Technical Machine Devolution is an okay card to lose. We will, however, finally see Nest Ball come down, so this can get one more basic Pokemon into play. Thinking about maybe going for another Charmander. But as you said, Freya, it may just have to be that Iono, and Benny will have to hope he can find some sort of combination Air Candy Pidgeot would be excellent if there's a Charizard to follow up to take the prize lead in this match. He 
pretty much bought himself a turn with that boss's orders, but it will be all for nothing if he's not able to capitalize off these six cards he's going to draw. Yeah, and I think in this instance, I think maybe one of the reasons why Benny opt uh, opted to you know not go for the Rotom, was it in the prizes at the start? It was, oh, yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. But I mean, even think about it, even if it wasn't in the prizes, it is such an easy liability for Gabriel to take an early knockout on. So there could have been an argument, even if it wasn't prized, to like not put it down. I'm sure Benny would have liked to in that instance regardless because his hand wasn't, didn't have much going on. But it's definitely time to think about when, you know, in the early game, you don't want to give Gabriel the chance to take uh, early prizes. So this hand, really not looking like Benny will be able to do much else. I think the last choice here for Benny is, do you just leave this Charmander active? Do you maybe retreat into one of your bench Pokemon and just going to leave the energy on the active? Pass things over to Gabriel, who will now have a hand of seven cards, thanks to that Iono. Maybe good, maybe bad, putting that hand onto the bottom of the deck. We will just see the Pokestop. You reset, of course, you can use that effect once per turn. And now this is Gabriel really just optimizing how he wants to go about this, of course. You can always shuffle your deck with some of your searching cards, and we will just see Earthen Vessel grab some more energy out of the deck and add two more cards that are ancient to the discard pile for Gabriel. Both the ancient uh, of being the urban vessel itself, and yeah, this garden now lots of main. Definitely not going to be as useful in this matchup. I think you just kind of want to go full aggression mode as much as you can, just start taking those prizes, and yeah, two more energy out of the deck as well for good measure. You can uh, attach one, conceal cards away the other one, set up a Professor Vitality maybe. This, the, the synergy is just so, so great. So at minimum, Gabriel, if he would like, which I'm sure he will like to do, then take a prize card here with this Roaring Moon. The question though, is there maybe a way to get down? The Roaring Moon, the problem is the last two Roaring Moon are in the discard pile, so we could maybe see Gabriel look for a Professor Sada's Vitality to power up both these Roaring Moon, and speaking of which, it Ooh. is there, using concealed cards, drawing two more, and will now be able to accelerate energy onto both Roaring Moon and draw an additional three cards. Yeah, Professor Sada's Vitality, absolutely phenomenal support for ancient Pokemon, uh, just... Uh, you know, enabling you to attack more quickly, to draw more cards. Uh, very reminiscent of a welder, of course, that we remember from a while ago, that let you attach fire engines from the hand and draw more cards. Just, uh, yeah, really, really phenomenal card. Maybe a little bit of a throwback here as we're watching the Ancient deck here on Championship Sunday. Here is a Pokestop. Does find two more item cards. Does find that Nest Ball, so this will be an interesting choice. Gabriel does, of course, play ways to bring back these Pokemon from the discard pile, two copies of Super Rod, and with one being in the hand, I think this is a good opportunity for Gabriel to bring these Roaring Moon back, since he has not attached an energy card, getting ahead of these attachments, and not locking yourself into having to play Professor Sada to attack is a good strategy. Gabriel looks like will do just that, and play two Nest Ball oh, to wow. get both Roaring Moon down onto the bench. That's exactly what he wants to do here. Yeah, you already have enough Ancient cards in the discard pile for the knockout, so just get the Roaring Moons back, get them onto the field, that way you know you have your attackers uh, chain set up and ready to go, and this is exactly what Gabriel wants to see. And there it is, Roaring Moon taking the first knockout of our Seniors Division Finals. And Benny, what can he do here? Sitting on a hand, but I don't know if there's a lot going on. It looks like there is an Arvin. Okay. Benny may be looking for a rare candy, but discards oh. his hero's cape off of that Pokestop. That is a big card with the change of Scarlet and Violet. Those tool cards are no longer item cards. So Benny is now going to lose that precious resource, and it really wasn't for a great return. Buddy Buddy Poffin was oh. not what he was looking for. Maybe he could have you know, preemptively done gone for the Arvin first. You know, uh, I guess you're just thinking you want to you know, get the random thing out of the way before you get the guaranteed thing. But now, because of uh, that sequencing, does kind of have to you know, lose the Hero's Cape for basically no reason. Yeah, it's hard because you want to find either Rare Candy or Ultra Ball off of Pokestop. So by playing Arvin, you technically grab one of those out of yeah, the deck. But exactly. sometimes you can't really know what those top three cards look like. And losing that Hero's Cape, we're going to have to take note of that. However, there is still Rare Candy plus Charizard, so we'll see that first Charizard EX, that Terrastalize Dark Charizard get evolved, and that Infernal Rain ability can put three Fire Energy into play, and with two going into this Charizard, we'll most likely see that attachment for turn, allow Pidgey to retreat, and Benny can respond with a Burning Darkness knockout. Uh, that's going to be, you know, a great way for Benny to sort of get into this game. You, you, want, you want to take prizes as quick as possible, like, especially when you're up against a single prize deck. You don't really have your usual tricks you, in the sense that yeah, Gabriel's not worried about, you know, the damage building up loads and loads uh, on the uh, Charizard EX because he knows that all this stuff can get not, be knocked out pretty easily anyway. So it's really just a matter of trying to get a KO on these two prizes before Benny can go through too many of Gabriel's own ta attackers. So we'll see that Burning Darkness used, Fire Energy off the prize cards, Benny responding, evening things up. This is where we've really got to keep an eye on these ancient card counts in the discard pile. We're not really at a position where Roaring Moon will be taking a one-hit knockout, but can 
Soften this Charizard up, and there we go. The first <laughs> Awakening Drum. Let's see it here. We've got some fun action between our competitors. Beating that drum down, drawing a card for each Ancient Pokemon in play. And with four Ancient Pokemon, that's a solid four cards drawn and another Ancient card added to the discard pile. Phenomenal item draw there with that Awakening Drum. Already a great boon to these Ancient decks. Not every single Ancient deck is opting to play it. Like, uh, we see a lot opting to go for the Prime Catcher instead just for that gusting effect, but you can't really uh, deny you know, four cards drawn on an item. Yeah, and I talked a little bit yesterday to Gabrielle and Vinny about this deck and why they decided to play it and how they constructed it. And the big thing they noted is they took very specific counts and really thought about the total amount of Ancient cards in this deck really know what numbers they want to hit. 330 is a big number, so sometimes even just that extra one Ancient card can make or break. Being able to get that one hit knockout super late in the game to usually close it out and give yourself the victory. Yeah, that's a funny thing, right? You think about Awakening Drum uh, as, you know, obviously you draw cards, but it's just the fact that it has that text Ancient on it and it's an instant play item that can get you that extra 10 damage. It's almost like you know, a plus power, plus I draw a bunch of draw cards that are in one in this deck. Four, five, keep counting. How many cards there is in the discard pile, I believe 13 or 14, so we're a little bit off being able to take a one-hit knockout, but again, softening this Charizard up, not bad at all, especially with how this looks, and there's another Ooh. Professor Sada's Vitality. There are some energy cards in the discard pile, we'll be interested to see where Vinny, or rather where Gabrielle decides to accelerate these energy cards, and even this late in the game, we'll still put that energy onto Coridon, draw three more cards, and it's doing very, very well in making sure that these Pokemon are powered up, especially towards the end of the game. Yeah, the more starters you can chain, the more attackers you can get going, the better for you, because if you can just keep chaining attackers in this deck, eventually you're going to uptrade and you're going to be in a very good spot because you are not putting down any two price Pokemon. Benny has to take six actual knockouts in order to win this game, and there's not many decks that you go up against where that's the thing you have to do, especially given how many decks have two prizes or even three prizes now. So Roaring Moon is primed and ready. Let's take a look and see how many well, are in 15. there. 15. So 15 ancient cards in the discard pile. Means that we'll see the Vengeance Fletching deal 220 damage. You know, yeah. we've got to do a lot of math. It's a little bit early on Sunday, I'm sure, for our viewers overseas it is too. So I'm not going to complain. We are here. We are locked in with this Pokemon TCG Finals. And now Benny has to really go back to the drawing board think, what am I supposed to do here? And we see one of those interesting inclusions in this Charizard deck, that Eerie as the top card found from the deck. We're gonna see another Pokestop really banking off finding something and gets rid of four valuable resources. You see Benny shaking his head thinking, come on, just give me a little bit of a break. I just need some help, an Ultra Ball, Rare Candy, something to get me through this. And it looks like you may have to just play this area as the supporter card. So, okay, we're gonna at least get to look at this hand. This card, two item cards we find there, and there's a lot of options here. What do you think Benny should get rid of? I mean, I, I guess it's, it's a little bit tough. I, I guess, yeah, the superior energy retrieval and the counter catcher makes the most sense. Superior energy retrieval in this deck, not even so much for getting energy back. Obviously, you can do that, but it's just a great resource to be able to discard cards out of your hand and get more ancient Pokemon in a discard pile. Yeah, in this case, honestly, you kind of know your opponent's going to take the lead from this point. So maybe it was a little bit better. Of course, it's a resource towards the end of the game that's useful, but you've got to give yourself some momentum right now before you fall too far behind. We're just going to go ahead and see the knockout here with Burning Darkness. And now Gabriel's in a position where, if he wants to, this knockout on Charizard is very, very feasible. There is 220 damage, so if there's four Ancient Pokemon in play, we could see this Primordial Beatdown enough damage to knock this Charizard out and preserve those Roaring Moon for later. I think that's exactly what Gabriel wants to do. And yet again, finds another wow. Professor Sada's Vitality, putting himself in an excellent spot, drawing more cards. Cannot really say more with how well this first game is going for Gabriel. It really is. And uh, now going to be able to sort of do the follow-up attack here with the Coridon just to take the knockout on this Charizard. And then, you know, Benny's going to eventually knock that out back, but then it's just going to be another Ancient card in a discard pile, and it won't be long before Gabriel reaches that critical mass and is able to, you know, have enough Ancient cards in a discard pile to take a one-hit knockout on a Charizard DX. And at that point, it is almost game over for Benny. Coridon number two coming down, and that will be the magic fourth uh, Ancient Pokémon needed over the line, Charizard being a little bit big, 330 HP, but that's no problem for Gabrielle. Just want to double check the resources. Harry can sometimes get rid of those pieces that you planned your whole game plan around, so may have to just adjust a little bit. Does have some of those more ancient cards. The uh, looks like Earthen Vessel in hand, has something like 
the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, and we'll just play the, uh, the Earthen Vessel, discard this Flutter Main, and this deck is getting very, very thin. I think only three or four cards left here for Gabrielle, but does have ways to recover cards so that he will not deck out. Uh, we're going we're gonna to see a surprise Chi Yu here from Benny to this card, too. No, we're not. It's not, the, it's not in the deck list, but uh, you know, some, sometimes it is something you've got you to bear in mind if uh, you, know, you get the deck too thin and uh, you just end up... I mean, we saw that yesterday, of course, uh, with the Chi Yu mill in the top four game of Alessandro versus uh, Isaiah. That was a big find there for Gabrielle off the prizes. Did find that second copy of Super Rods. Sometimes you really need to put just that one last copy of Roaring Moon into play to just make sure that you keep all your other Pokemon in the discard pile that are your ancient Pokemon and just have that last attacker. So I'm sure Gabrielle breathing a little bit of a sign of relief. The rest of the prizes, they're good, but they're not going to be as impactful as that Super Rod. Yeah, yeah, definitely important to find that. It just, uh, you have to find more attackers and to make sure that you don't end up decking out, of course. That's the last way you want to lose. Uh, finally, just like, finally, Pokestop finding some help for Benny is free items off the top there. And great items at that. Now finally has Rare Candy plus Ultra Ball. So if there is something like a Charizard EX or a Pidgeot, any piece here, I don't think Benny has either of those. If there was either another rare, if there was either another Rare Candy, a Charizard, a Pidgeot, any of these pieces, we could really start cooking here. Benny is just going to be in a pretty awkward position, may have to just grab this Pidgeot and think about how he wants to go about the rest of this turn. He can still make this work, he can still use that Forest Seal Stone, of course that V-Star power has yet to be used, but it would be at the cost of putting in one of these low HP V Pokemon, that Luminion and Rotom, both easily being able to be knocked out something like the Vengeance Fletching. Yeah, it's not a great feeling, and I, and maybe you just have to do it this way. Maybe you just grab that Luminion, because of course I can grab you the Arvin, and then that would get all the pieces that you need to put it together. But like you just said, you put down another very low HP V Pokemon on the bench, it just make Gabriel's prize map even easier than it already is. It will just be that Pidgeot. I think Benny understands that with sort of how far behind he is in terms of how good Gabriel's board looks and what attackers he has established, he cannot give any easy prizes, especially with that Hero's Cape being unavailable. So we'll just see Benny use that rare candy, evolve into Pidgeot. This Charizard can attack this turn into the Coridon if there's an energy attachment due to that excited heart ability. Currently, its attack requirement for Combustion Blast is two fire energy. I think this is just the decision making here for Benny. What is the piece that I want to grab? It looks like it will be the Charizard, but with the retreat, with an energy being prized and with one being on the active, there's only six fire energy total, so may need to also play something like Super Rod to make sure that this Charizard gets powered up, and if not this turn, definitely in the upcoming turns. Yeah, I mean, it would've been nice if you could, maybe you could've just quick searched for a fire energy just to attach that until they'll take a knockout, but no fire energy available in the deck, so we're gonna just grab the Charizard instead. And actually, he's gonna be boss's orders on the other Coridon. Maybe just trying to buy a little time here. It does have a retreat cost of two, so Gabriel's gonna have a bit of a hard time, as we already mentioned, moving it out of the active, given that he doesn't really play many switching cards and does have the oh. Penny in hand. Okay, Penny making its debut so far in this deck. A card that Gabriel put into this deck a little bit different than his brother, maybe with some of the advice that Gabriel got from the day one experience from Vinny, is going to play that at the perfect opportunity, getting that Coridon out of play. It served its purpose, and now, with how late in the game and how close Gabriel is to taking all these prize cards, is a great Pokemon to just discard and get out of the hand. And it looks like Ariel's done us a huge favor here. We see, we see the dice indicating just how many are in there. So we're going to save us a little bit more maps in the future. So that is currently 19 in the discard pile, though. But, but Gabriel is very, very close to that critical mass at this point. Yeah, 260 damage. And let's not forget, Pidgeot EX is a two-prize Pokemon being an EX. There is always going to be the threat of that boss's orders on Gabriel's side is playing that one copy. Who knows, something like a Vengeance Fletching this turn to knock out Radiant Charizard, and then a boss's orders the following turn could be what Gabriel needs to close up this game. And there's an Ancient Booster Energy Capture going onto the active Roaring Moon as well for good measure, just to make the cave even harder. And yeah, Vengeance Fletching takes a knockout on the Radiant Charizard. Back to Benny, and uh, yeah, if you're Benny, what do you do here? You gotta start to disrupt your opponent. You've gotta find some sort of combination. If there was either an Iono or a Rare Candy in this hand, Benny could do both, but doesn't have either piece, and now how do you ever just let your opponent keep their massive hand? Yeah, he's gonna have to just use this uh, Pokestop, but does find that Ultra Ball. Hey. So with, but the problem is Ultra Ball is okay, but it would require him to maybe have to put Luminion V into play. It's not what you exactly want to find, but it will help Benny get to this position where he can take a knockout with Charizard EX and disrupt Gabriel, put him down to two cards in hand, 
and hope that this last Charizard EX or potentially an additional one can get him across the finish line. And I guess at this point, it doesn't matter as much, right? Because Gabriel's at that point where maybe you can almost get a big knockout on a two-prizer anyway. So putting the Luminion down, obviously, it does make things a little bit easier. But I don't think in the grand scheme of things, you just need to go for it at this point. Now is the turn that you, you know, take this risk. You just need to find a disruption. You need to set up your attackers. And you need to just prevent Gabriel from being able to find the last few resources. And Iona is going to be the way to do that. You got to do what you got to do at this point. I mean, with the way things are, boss's orders would win the game regardless. Can once this Pokemon is knocked out, along with that booster energy capsule hitting the discard pile, yep, exactly. it will be within range. And Benny understands this is what I've got to do. It's not also bad to have a V Pokemon down. Benny has yet to use that Star Alchemy V Star power. So maybe later on, if he starts to get some momentum back in his court, now to come back, find those critical pieces towards the end to secure himself a victory. Super Rod going to shuffle in free energy back. Very, very important to do so. There aren't any energy in the deck currently. Going to bench a Charmander as well, and then finally go for that Quick Search. And you've got to imagine this is going to be for the Rare Candy. And then after that, going to be Luminion, then Luminous Sign for that Iono, and Prey. The combination of cards are here for Benny. Could also see maybe some sort of Countercatcher play, but I think Benny just wants to have that resource for later on in the game. So here we go. We'll see two energy onto this Charizard EX, one onto the bench Charmander, and... After this, it's going to be Iono and Prey for Benny, and hope that Gabrielle is just not able to get specific pieces. I think the one thing that would make this just a little bit better here for Benny is if he could maybe find that copy of Lost City. It would not only make sure that that Roaring Moon doesn't go to the discard pile, so it's one less ancient card in there, but it would also remove that Pokestop, maybe hindering Gabrielle's ability to get back into this game. To uh, uh, Gabriel, but, yeah, most of it looks like Gabriel will literally draw the last two cards to the deck, and like his hand will become the deck now. And but it looks like did not find the lost city off of that Iono. Let's find that pal pad. So oh, okay. some of those supporter cards discarded early. Maybe that Turo that could come back into the deck as a way to maybe heal this off. And Benny is going full disruption mode, full stall mode. We usually see this in some of our control decks, but Charizard with Pidgeot. I mean. Just got a little bit more attacking power than these decks that are not dedicated to using Charizard EX. We'll see the Professor Turo come back in, as well as the Airy. And there it is, Burning Darkness, knocking out this Roaring Moon. Benny, going to put himself back into this game, but he's still got a big hill to climb. He's still got to find multiple knockouts, and more importantly, Gabriel has a few Pokemon powered up, so at worst, is still okay if he doesn't do much this turn. It is true, and now 22 ancient cards in the discard pile, so that is going to, wait, 22 or 20? 21. 21, okay, yeah. Yep. So, no, but that is going to be, that is 280 damage, so that Pidgeot can be knocked out, that uh, Luminion can be knocked out, and only with five more ancient cards, even the Charizard can be knocked out, so let's see, can Gabriel, Gabriel put it together? It's going to be good for a Pokestop. And three items Ooh. found there, and I think this is exactly what Gabriel wanted. He's going to count the cards in his deck. If there's a boss's orders left, he can play this Poke Gear. Let's see how many cards are there. there and he is. does have the boss's orders to bring up that Luminion and take the first game down. Is Gabriel Fernandez on his path to become a back-to-back -back international champion? That first game is making it look like that could be the case. Uh, a phenomenal uh, game there from Gabriel. Really showing the power of Ancient Box in full force, just like uh, Vinny did yesterday, and yeah. Wow, what, what a phenomenal player. And in this instance, you know, going up against one of the best in the seniors division as well. Not that he isn't one of the best himself, but in this, uh, it looks like in this uh, start of the showdown, Gabriel is now one game up. You've got to feel for Benny there. Had that Rotom V prize. I'm sure that would have helped him maybe get a little bit of a better start earlier on and had to rely on Pokestop. And you see how Pokestop is a great card. It works for both players, but if you haven't built your deck around Pokestop, it can really come back to harm you. Don't know if it would have been extremely relevant in that case. Of course, even with that Hero's Cape at the end, one of those Pokemon could have been knocked out, but it is something to note. See if that finds a little bit more use in the second game. Yeah, and uh, the Pokestops there really... Benny's deck is not built around Pokestop, but they're just, you know, the draws are just so rough. He had to just try and make use of it to get Ed somewhere, and the first few didn't really go his way, but then we saw it later on, uh, you know, finally hitting something off the Pokestop. But this one here, getting rid of the Hero's Cape just to get two Buddy Buddy Poppins, that was absolutely brutal. Yeah, and really just missing that attack as well. Only able to get that Charizard EX out and then had to rely on using that Radiant Charizard, which just got knocked out. And Gabriel had a pretty easy prize mapping, was going down to two prize cards. And from there, boss's orders could take a knockout on one of those two prizers. Just that entire game, excellent use of Pokestop. Things can really go bad sometimes if you discard a lot of supporter cards. Energies are like okay to get rid of, but sometimes you just want them in the hand. So Gabriel got the luck he needed that first game. See if things continue in game. Number two, as things are heated up, we had 
pretty sizable game here. We've got about 48 minutes left on the clock. I would like to see this go to the distance. This would be an excellent set to see three games. But having it come down to the wire, things are going to get intense as we'll see the prize cards come out for game number two. And there is that Luminion and double bosses orders, as well as that awakening drum for Gabriel in the top of the prizes. So, one the ones once again, and then no, a lot harder to access as well because it is at the top of the prizes, but uh, you're just going to have to make do without it. And it looks like we are ready to kick off here in our game two. And it looks like uh, Benny's going to start with the Manaphy, and Gamera's going to start with that Flutter main. So, it looks like Benny opting to go second in this position will force Gabrielle to go first. Sometimes this ancient deck just wants to play things like Explorer's Guidance early on to get some of those ancient cards in the discard pile and sort of get those key pieces into the hand. And then eventually you saw how getting Professor Sada's vitality every turn as your supporter is super impactful. There is still a nest ball in hand for Gabrielle, and we see immediately Radiant Greninja looking like the choice off of the nest ball. And this makes complete sense, right? Yeah, Radiant Greninja, we saw just uh, you know, turn after turn, just building up more resources in hand, getting those energies in a discard pile. It is definitely the thing you want to see early on as soon as possible, just to get yourself into the game. We'll take note of that A-spec being prized. It's one of the easier cards to check now that you're prize checking because it's really hard to miss it. It stands out with that pink hue it has all around. They've changed a little bit. I really like the way these new A-specs look. Very, very appealing. Yeah, the, the, actually, the, the gorgeous pink. In contrast with the, the gray that they used to be, of course, I remember, yeah, yeah computer search. There, there is one gray uh, A-spec they can still play, of course, so that old Master Ball still uh, yeah, got, yeah, got uh, remade uh, now, so you can uh, have that old one if you want, but... So that would be the only great one. The rest, it is pink all the way, baby. Yeah, I don't even want to think about how old both of our competitors were when that Master Ball came out. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. You know what? A lot of time has passed. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting old. But you know what's not getting old? The action still that we have between our players. I think Gabriel is really just thinking about how he wants to uh, really sequence the rest of this turn. I think there's maybe a Pokey Gear in this hand. The big thing early is just getting down these basic Pokemon. Once you get these Coridon, Roaring Moon into play, the rest of it becomes easy. It's just getting energy in the discard pile, getting ancient cards in the discard pile, finding those supporters to accelerate. So let's see what the rest of the hand looks like. There's at least an energy, and it looks like an earthen vessel as well. Okay. I think what Gabrielle is thinking about doing here is just trying to draw into more cards that are potentially energy and just saving that discarding effect so that he has not only an energy to attach this turn, but also energy to concealed cards away in the future. Do you think this is what he should be doing? Or yeah. would you really like to see him maybe play that vessel first? It, it is very tough because you want more angel cards than discard pile, but I think, yeah, you, you just, I think going for the concealed cards now just makes the most sense because if you do hit another ancient card, then you can discard it, get more energy, and then, oh, it looks like, is that a, oh, it's two starters, side of a vitality, okay. Mm. So now does have this earthen vessel, and that is the show of a strong hand when on your first turn, going first, you're discarding one of those supporter cards that allows your deck to just keep on chugging every turn. See the fighting energy get grabbed, and... I mean, this is now an interesting choice for Benny. I'm sure we'll just see the energy come down onto the Roaring Moon. But there is the potential that if you want to attach to this Flutter main, next turn, Professor Sada, plus a way to really attach an energy, could allow you to use that attack. But I think Gabriel's made the right choice. Flutter main's really just not worth investing into. And we're just going to see the attachment, the pass over, and Benny, finally this game, having an excellent supporter to start things off in that Arvin. Yeah, I was a little bit worried looking at the rest of the hand. It didn't look too strong, but then as soon as I saw the Arvin, I thought, yeah, no, you know what, never mind. Benny is good to go. Going to be able to find that Buddy Buddy Puffin and uh, that Hero's Cape straight away. Just, uh, I think the Forest Heal Stone's already in hand, so yeah, just why not Go grab the Hero's Cape in instead, make sure that it doesn't end up getting uh, you know, milled away with Pokestop again. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic on how and when you want to use the Hero's Cape. There is an argument to use the Hero's Cape early, put it onto a Pokemon that's out of range, to put it out of range from being knocked out, to really slow your opponent down in terms of the prize race, and eventually that Hero's Cape, it will give you the lead you need to run away with the game, especially when your Pokemon have so much HP. 330 is a lot for this Charizard. We are, however, going to see the V-Star power used early, and this is Benny valuing that setup early on. Yeah, it is. So instead of grabbing the Buddy Puffin straight away, just ended up going for the Nest Ball to grab the Rotom, attach the Forest Seal Stone, Star Alchemy, and use that to grab the Buddy Puffin instead. So that way, you kind of you get an extra Pokemon for free in that way, right? Because now you have the Rotom down, and yeah, you used your V-Star power, but now not only can you set up your bench, but you can also end your turn on an instant charge and draw free cards. So I think the only other question is, do we see an energy card come down? That could be a card that Benny could hold in the hand. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility on Ultra Ball, potentially. I mean, there is a very, very... Ah, it's not even really possible, though. I was thinking you could maybe find a way to pivot out and then use boss's orders on the lone Charmander, but with Gabrielle not playing something like that Prime Catcher, looks like this Charmander will be safe. Instant charge to end the turn off, and Gabrielle has a lot of key pieces in the hand. 
earthen vessel to boost those counts of the, uh, the ancient cards in the discard pile and does have that earthen vessel to get the energies out. This is looking excellent again here for Gabrielle. This is how you draw it up here, Freya. Yeah, this is looking absolutely phenomenal for, for Gabrielle. Just setting up really, really well, just like it did in game one. You're getting more ancient cards in the discard pile, and uh, we know that there's the Sardis Vitality good to go as well, but looks like it's going to be just another Explorer's Guide. Oh no, that's just the discard pile. But, yeah, you got to play the Sardis Vitality this turn. Yeah, you can play Sardis Vitality. I think it's just going to be the Explorer's Guide. Oh, it is Explorer's Guide. Okay. Supporter. I think Gabrielle's main concern is if you take this knockout, then Benny all of a sudden is in a position where you have to commit your energy to return potentially to retreat this off. If you don't find a basic Pokemon and you play this Sada, then you are really going to be at a disadvantage and you are again locking yourself into those supporter cards on consistent turns. Right. Gabriel was just using those at opportune times game one and it didn't even feel like he needed Sada because he just found times to use it in between those attacks. Albeit Benny didn't put on a lot of pressure, so could go a little bit differently. Just for now, going to see which four cards he wants to keep. It looks like we will also see that Sada hit the discard pile. And that sure we see as Roaring well. Moon, yeah. Yeah, of course, it is a little bit brutal. We did see it was a sort of a vital tech card just right at the end of that game one. But uh, in this instance, just valuing the other resources too much so that Penny will have to go. So after that, it is just another energy attachment, and then it's back to Benny. Yeah, this is good as well for Gabrielle, just leaving this Fluttermane in the active spot. Way this would work out is if Benny really wants to push his aggression with Charizard, he's not knocking out a super valuable Pokemon. Gabriel knows how this Charizard deck functions. In most cases, it's going to be extremely unlikely that Benny has the combination of Rare Candy Charizard plus Boss's Orders. And even to put all of those resources invested into that, it's a lot. It means that Pidgeot doesn't get established, and Gabriel is more than okay with that, even if it means one of these Roaring Moon are to be knocked out. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the thing when you're playing a, a single price focus deck. You don't really mind, you know, one or maybe two knockouts early on because you know the later the game goes on, the more you can upgrade favorably. And you, you just really don't mind that in that instance, especially because like, Benny's not even like, taking uh, prizes here, just attaching the TM Devolution and another instant charge. Another slow start for Benny, not what you want against a deck that wants to just get ahead and start the race, start the prize race. Gabriel getting a bonus turn, essentially, can now play that Sada's Vitality allowing this Fluttermane to retreat thanks to that energy acceleration, and he'll draw three additional cards. This is how you draw it up for Gabrielle. You're going to take the prize lead again, you're going to have two Roaring Moon powered up, and you're going to have a huge hand size while your opponent has yet to put Pidgeot or Charizard into play. Yeah, these slow starts really, really hurting Benny here as he's uh, not able to take any kind of, you know, early early prizes early just to try and uh, make, swing that tempo back in his favor. So instead, it's going to be Gabriel taking the first prize just on this mana fee, but not for maybe a concealed card just to draw some, draw some more, setting up another Roaring Moon on the bench with energy as well, just to keep that attacking chain going. And yeah, Gabriel's in a super good position in this game too. There it is, Vengeance Fletching taking the knockout. Gabriel strikes first in game two, five prize cards away from becoming a back-to-back -back international champion. Phenomenal stuff here from Gabrielle, but you know, let's not count Benny out yet. You know, this Charizard deck is very powerful. We know that it's known for its comebacks. We know that, you know, Disruption can come into play. And there is the Arvin now here from Benny as well. So definitely going to try and make use of that to try and pull something together. Getting the energy ready has the, you know, the Rare Candy and the Ultra Ball. I think we're going to see a Charizard knockout here. Hopefully can get both that Pidgeot and the Charizard out. And I think the way this hand looks can play the Ultra Ball out. And by having that Charizard in hand, will be the resources here for Benny to get both the Rare Candy Pidgeot and Rare Candy Charizard into play. Quick Search finally online, and I mean, for Benny, you gave up that first prize, but honestly, with how your response is looking this turn, that's more than okay. I think Benny's still got a big shot in this game and is now finally getting these Pokemon powered up. Yeah, he knows exactly what he's, he's got to do here. You know, firing on all cylinders now that the setup is all there. Red Candy Pidgeot, Red Candy Charizard, Infernal Rain, set up your Charizard, set up the other Charmander, and uh, just start taking prizes and... Now it's going to be really hard for Gabriel because he's going to have such a hard time to, to taking knockouts on these huge Charizard EXs. So we'll see the retreat into that Charizard. Burning Darkness, because there is no booster capsule, doesn't even matter because of the prize taken, will get the knockout. Benny evens things up at five prizes. And the big question here now for Gabriel, how is this hand? You've had turns to build this up with the Explorer's Guidance, Professor Sada, 
It looks like there's lots of resources at his disposal, potentially another one of those Professor Sada's vitality, and there are plenty of energies in the discard pile. I think we're going to see this get played here for Gabriel, and we do. Yeah, we do. Sada's vitality, uh, just chaining those turn after turn is going to be exactly what Gabriel wants, because if your opponent is putting out a threat where suddenly they're attacking uh, you know, fast and consistently, what do you do? Just do the same in return, but do it on one prize so that you win that prize trade, and that is exactly, that's really one of the biggest strengths that this uh, ancient box archetype has, especially the single prize version without the Roaring Moon EX. I think the last thing maybe for Gabriel is again getting an energy attachment down onto a valuable Pokemon, and with this Ultra Ball, if Gabriel has another Dark Energy, he could potentially get himself another Pokemon powered up, but even in this position, Gabriel is not forced to play Asada for the next couple of turns. He can just next turn a manual attach, and then the turn after that play a manual attachment down too, it's really how using these Sadas for full effect at opportune times allows you to have as much pacing and as much tempo in your control as possible. The way Gabriel has played this, every single time he's played a Sada, it has been for two energy, so he can keep his attacking chain going, and he knows his, en his tempo of energy attachments is always on point, so he's not worried about ever missing an attack or ever missing a beat, and that's exactly how he's going to win against Benny. We'll actually preemptively play this Pokegear Gear looking okay. for supporter cards potentially is going to just get another Professor Sada into the hand. And this is pretty interesting here for Gabriel. I feel like you've got to maybe have some sort of understanding of Benny really wanting to disrupt your hand, especially now that you grab this Sada. This could be a little bit of a bluff here. You play the Pokegear, Gear, you look to find a good supporter, and even though that supporter is good, maybe the rest of the cards in your hand aren't that impactful, and you maybe put Benny onto this thought process of, oh, his hand has to be good, he has that powerful supporter, I've got to use my Quick Search to find something like Iono. Yeah, and that, and that means if you're, you're doing Quick Search for Iono, you're not using Quick Search to find something else that could actually be more impactful. We did see, of course, uh, the... Uh the Eri in that last game, uh, picking off uh, two cards. End up not mastering too much in the end, but that could be very, very different this time. That's another point as well, right? If Eri got played that turn, you would just discard the Pokegear. So Gabriel playing around that very smartly. Maybe there's just no other powerful resources to really chain together supporters if there wasn't one in the hand. So Benny's got a lot of options at this point. This Charizard will take 200 damage from Vengeance Fletching. There is a Nest Ball. We could see that get played, and we do and get down another Charmander for when this Charizard EX eventually gets knocked out. Yeah, we do see that very interesting uh, Giacomo supporter there. Not going to be something that's uh, relevant against uh, Gabriel, of course. It does discard a special energy from each one of your opponent's uh, Pokemon, but uh, yeah, no special energy in uh, Gabriel's deck, unfortunately, for Benny. And here we go. Quick search for Benny. Lots of different options. And yes, we'll grab that Iono, so Gabriel's hand will be shuffled, put onto the bottom of the deck, and five cards will be drawn. Gabriel has also not put Pokestop into play yet. So that will not be a tool he has after this Iono, unless he can draw into it off of these five cards. So it's going to be very, very crucial here to see what Gabriel finds off of this Iono. So there it is. Iono for five for both players. Does Gabriel find, I mean, I was going to say, does he find any, anything useful? But at this point, this is exactly why Gabriel's setup is so strong. Even with just the board that he has, he knows he has a follow-up knockout guaranteed. So even if he doesn't draw amazingly off of this, he can still keep up his chain of attacks going. And that's exactly why he's preemptively just doing these starters and doing these energy attachments to keep himself guaranteed to carry on that chain as long as possible. Yeah, I think a card Benny may have really wanted to potentially find in this position is something like that Charmeleon, just to not force you to have to play Rare Candy because you are essentially understanding that this Charizard EX is more than likely getting knocked out. But Benny, for the first time, taking the prize lead in game number two. But with Gabriel having this Roaring Moon powered up, it's going to be stolen away from him again after this turn. Gabriel does find that Pokestop, and here we go. Oh. What do we see discarded? There is oh. that Explorer's Guidance. It's not a card you like to lose, but it's not super detrimental. You do now have that Super Rod, so if you can maybe search out Roaring Moon again, you can bring those back and then bench them so they can be powered up in future turns. Yeah, of course, not ideal, but it is, of course, another card that has that text Ancient on it. So now, with that and the Fluttermain discarded, there are 16 Ancient cards in the discard pile. We're getting close to that Critical Mask again, Ethan. It does have a Poke Gear too, and does find one of the last remaining copies of that Explorer's Guidance. Gabriel is running a little bit low on supporter cards, so a key piece we're going to have to see come down eventually is that Palpad item card that can shuffle two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. We'll see the Explorer's Guidance get played, so Gabriel will look at six, choose two, discard four. Really just looking for either ways to get more energy cards into play, some energy attachments for turn would be nice, or with that super odd, maybe some Pokemon search. Yeah, and of course, you can afford to do this now, right? Because you have been so good with preemptively setting up your attackers, you can afford to take a turn to just dig more through the deck instead. You know, if you find an energy, you can attach that, and then you have your next attack ready to go, and then you can find other resources, that maybe like that counter catcher to bring something up.
So right now there are 16 ancient cards in the discard pile, will be 17 once this Explorer's Guidance hits the discard pile as well as potentially up to four more with what cards are discarded. So we'll take note of what resources Gabrielle is discarding, where they could be good or they could be bad. It really just depends and we're actually gonna see the Explorer's Guidance Looks like potentially just be kept or discarded. It's kind of confusing to see whether or not we're seeing Ultra Ball get played right now, but I think Gabriel's just deciding which cards he wants to discard and will actually discard that Ultra Ball along with some other cards. And it looks like actually all non-ancient cards hitting the discard Ooh. pile off of that Explorer's Guidance. Yeah, not ideal. I mean, you would like to at least you know one or two that you could discard, but uh, that is just sometimes how it goes. And in fact, they're going to be a Super Rod played. Shuffling back in a couple of those Roaring Moons, you do need to you know keep the, this attacking chain going. And although it doesn't mean two less ancient cards in a discard pile, it is more important right now to make sure that you can have enough attacks to see you through to the end of the game. And with this Super Rod, it means that Gabriel, from this point on, if he doesn't maybe discard it with something like Pokestop, will have all of the cards he needs when it comes to Pokemon to finish this game off. With many at four prize cards, Gabriel can just use Roaring Moon four times with four different Roaring Moon to attack and hope that that's enough. And with that Ultra Ball being discarded, I think the thought process here for Gabriel is we'll see Earthen Vessel get played, the deck will be searched, See if there is maybe some energy cards left. We did see one get shuffled into the deck. We could be relying off of a concealed cards to maybe get one of those Roaring Moon that were just shuffled back in. Yeah, we, yeah, we could. And uh, in the meantime, it's like just, uh, was that one energy grabbed off of the Earthen Vessel? Wait, hold on. Yeah, just one off the Earthen Vessel. Okay. And then we're also going to see Nest Ball. So Roaring Moon number three coming down into play. And Gabrielle is still finding what he needs. He's keeping pace, and he is in a super solid position. It may just come down to Benny doing all he can to continue to stream attackers, disrupt, and then maybe, just maybe, the extra HP from that hero's cape could be what Benny needs to make sure that final knockout doesn't occur. Wow, this is down to the wire as ever. I mean, we're not even, you know, multiple prize cards are into the game yet. It's all, all to play for. Gabriel knows that he's in a very, very good position. It's gonna be, yeah, not quite enough for a knockout there. But, uh, oh, wait, oh wait, no, hold on. We're just counting. Oh, just counting. Okay, yep. I was going to say, because that damage already on it, so it wouldn't make, wouldn't make much sense. But yeah. uh, just going to count up those ancient cards and discard very nicely for us again. So, yeah, currently sitting on 16. Because, of course, there are a couple we'll put back, and then one was put back in. So now it's going to be the Vengeance Fletching. KO on the active Charizard, two prizes for Gabrielle, and it's up to Benny to respond. Yeah, there's still three ancient cards in the prizes. That could really be a big deal for Gabrielle, notably that Awakening Drum. It's very, very specific math that he needs, very specific amount of ancient cards discarded to get those big numbers later on. But action is back on Benny. A few cards now active for him. That counter catcher really could be a potential way to disrupt through Gabriel. You could see something like Iono plus counter catcher onto Radiant Greninja, or we could see Benny just continue to target these attackers down and force Gabriel to maybe find Sada's vitality or an attachment the following turn. We'll need that to attack with one of these Roaring Moon. Yeah, well, the log, maybe considering going for this Radiant Charizard here, of course, uh, with Gabriel having taken three prizes, only going to need two energy to attack, but maybe if you do that, maybe he, that actually makes Gabriel's uh, prize map a little bit easier, because you can just, you know, KO this Radiant Charizard, and then you can use that boss's orders to bring up the Rotom V for the last two prizes. Yeah, that Pidgeot EX, 280 HP, is definitely a lot more realistic. That Rotom as well. Let's not forget, Benny does play something like the Professor Turo, so we could maybe oh, later true. on see Rotom get picked up, Gabriel will not have that easy, liable two prizes in play to be knocked out. And of course, that wasn't viable in the last game because we did see that Professor Turo got discarded off of one of the Pokestops that really hurt Benny in game one. I think Benny is just deciding how he wants to play through the rest of his turn. Still has access to Quick Search and does have the Lost Vacuum. Hey. Very interesting. We're actually going to see Luminion get Lost Zone. That can always be a card towards the end of the game that could be disrupted. And this is Benny's best play here, it seems. Get rid of this Pokestop. Put Gabrielle down onto a four-card hand, and uh oh, it looks like we maybe saw a card hit the... Okay, well, it looks like everything's good. Yeah. Sometimes when you put the cards on the bottom, I have some horror stories of accidentally shuffling in oh, cards no. off of Iono. This isn't about me, this right. is about our two competitors, and there is Ultra Ball for Benny, and this can maybe grab that Charmeleon or Charizard, especially with Quick Search still at his disposal. Yeah, it looks like uh, actually going to Super Rod for good measure, put back some energies. It's going to be very important to do that, because now, yeah, you can Quick Search, for that uh, rare candy, and then you go rare candy Charizard, and you get all those energies out, and you basically have all your attackers set up for the rest of the game. Yeah, shuffling those energies back in, and there's the rare candy. And this is a little bit risky. You've always got to take note of 
relying on Pidgeot, and Benny is very heavily relying off of Pidgeot's EX's quick search ability next turn. Zero cards in hand, playing everything out. We'll get a prize card with a knockout from its Burning Darkness attack. From there, we'll just be evening things up, and Gabrielle is still at three prize cards, still has a good amount of energy cards in play. It will really just come down to what these three cards look like from the Iono. Benny will retake, the, or rather, even things up, Burning Darkness to take the knockout, here we go. What did Gabrielle find off of these three cards from Iono? Plus the top deck, is there something like a Sada? It's a There's Poke a Gear. Poke Gear. Do we see Professor Sada? It's the last card off the Poke Gear. That's a huge find for Gabrielle. Wow, the Poke Gear finding the exact vital card. And now with that, we'll be able to draw three more cards and power both his Roaring Moons and keep that attacking chain going. That is exactly what Gabrielle needed. It does also have an Earthen Vessel, and that is super smart sequencing here from Gabrielle. Did not want to shuffle the deck, knew where his supporter cards were, exactly. maximized his odds, and it paid off with it being the seventh and final card off that Poke Gear. It's something you always have to be aware of, I know, of course, because it shuffles to the bottom of the deck. You know that you have a sort of a more awareness of the positioning of the cards in the deck, so you can use that to your advantage, as Gabrielle did here. It pays off in spades. And now playing all of these searching cards, Nest Ball to get that final Roaring Moon down, the Earthen Vessel to find a fighting energy that can always be discarded with something like Concealed cards. And I think Gabrielle has found what he needs this turn. The Professor Sada can power up both of the Roaring Moon, and we still haven't seen something like a manual attachment come down. Here we go. Professor Sada's vitality accelerating to energy, and Gabrielle will continue to draw through his deck. Now, does Gabriel still have access to Boss's Orders? I don't, think I, I don't recall seeing it yet, right? So I think it's still in the deck. Oh, I think he still got access to it. That was super important in that first game. We will still see Concealed cards. Go ahead and discard a Fighting Energy, draw two. And we also see that cool one of inclusion in the hand. That superior energy retrieval can yes. bring back four energy cards from the discard pile at the cost of discarding two cards from your hand. And Gabrielle is more than happy to get rid of this Coridon. And the Nest Ball really won't have a lot of use. And all those energies <laughs> coming back, they are live cards as a draw option with that concealed cards. Big find there for Gabrielle. And hold on, so that's 21 right now, so that is enough to KO the Pidgeot, not quite enough to KO the Charizard yet, but can he can he get there to the Charizard? I mean, for five extra seems like a bit of a big ask. I don't think no, he can quite get there, but uh, still a very good number to hit regardless. Yeah, I think as long as he's at least hitting into this Charizard, this is what you want to see. However, we've got to, again, think about what resources Penny has. If he can play something like a Professor Turo and reestablish Charizard EX, Plus, keeping it powered up, which we already see two Charmander in play. This is going to be a big top deck. What do we see? I know. Yeah, off of two cards, you would, I think, literally have to have the combination of rare, of two of Rare Candy, Charizard, and Turo. Yeah. And that is just really a lot to ask for, especially when you had no cards to start the turn except for the prize and your top deck. So now, Benny's got to decide. Do I just play this Iono in hand? Do I maybe quick search for something? It will just be the Iono, so Benny will get three cards. Gabrielle will get three as well. He still does have access to Quick Search, so either can try and start building up another Charizard to attack with, or we could see maybe some preparation for more disruption the following turn. Yeah, we do see the Gabriel the join to that boss's orders, so yeah, definitely still available to him. It's we've not been able to play the Turo. Gabriel's prize map is looking pretty good because I mean, just Benny can't physically take enough prizes quickly enough, right? You know, Gabriel has such an easy map to just take two and then knock out you know something else to win the game, and uh, especially with that boss's orders in hand. Benny's in a very, very tough spot. I think it's all going to come down to two specific cards here, potentially, for Benny that I have my eye out for. It's that Hero's Cape we haven't seen come down yet, and that Professor Turo. If this Charizard gets knocked out, but I think this is actually a really smart play here from Benny. Yeah. Retreat this Charizard, sort of just leave it on the bench, no longer as an attacker, and then use this fresh Charizard if you can put yourself in a position where Gabrielle cannot take a knockout next turn, then you essentially clinch the game up with having that Radiant Charizard plus Charizard EX. And this is Benny's best play at this position. This does activate something like Counter Catcher for Gabrielle, but I 100% agree with what he's doing. Repower that Charizard up if you need, but it's going to be a big turn for Gabrielle if he cannot either hit 330 damage or take a knockout via boss's orders or counter catcher, then all Benny has to do is attack twice to win. But we know that Gabriel has the boss's orders in hand already. Oh, wow. That's a big piece. Did get Iota to boss. That's exactly yeah. what you want to see. Does already have two energy onto this bench Roaring Moon, and now the choice for Gabriel here is, what do you go after? I mean, having boss right now, it's definitely what you need, I mean, but you're going to have to find, oh, I guess, yeah, you still need to, however, find 330 damage, and the big issue here is if you play this boss's orders, what do you target down? If you target down a one prize Pokemon, 
then what ends up happening is the Charizard can come up with something like the Hero's Cave. If you go after a two prize Pokemon, you're have, gonna have to find still another Gust. This is going to get very, very tricky. We'll see Gabrielle yeah. just put this booster energy onto the Roaring Moon, and I think you've gotta take a prize card somehow here for Gabrielle. You've gotta go for the pitch out, right? Because that would be the thing that can guarantee the Hero's Cave. So if you take care of the pitch out, you know, you take a knockout, you take two prizes, and you sort of take away, take away a guaranteed out to get that Hero's Cave. Maybe. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's so tough, though. It's, it, it really is just difficult to, to explain. I mean, you do cut off that draw engine, but then again, Charizard comes up, and if the Hero's Cape is just there, then all of a sudden, the way things work is Gabrielle will not have any other way to gust and will be forced to go through this. So he needs to take a one prize knockout this turn. Otherwise, a Charizard can just sit in the active with a Hero's Cape and Gabrielle cannot deal 430 damage to it. So right, Gabrielle's yeah. gonna take the best line to play and does have the pal pad as well to potentially put back some more important supporter cards. Is looking at that, potentially putting boss back too. And I think this is probably the best line here for Gabrielle. Put back the boss, put back in that Explorer's Guidance. That way you have two potential routes, either a big 330 at the end or one more boss's orders to close things out. Got to be, oh no, maybe I should give me double Explorer's Guidance instead. It's so tough because Gabrielle's hand is pretty weak as it is. Doesn't really have any other cards to work with and there's not even an energy on that bench Roaring Moon. So, I mean, Gabrielle will have to find either a combination of energy plus 26 cards in the discard pile, but that's if there's no Hero's Cape or he has to find boss's orders plus energy and that's that is just really a lot to ask for. However, his deck is just so thin, so maybe it is a possibility if there's something like an energy still remaining to concealed cards or something away. It looks like it's going to be Pal Pal for the two explorers guidance and then Super Rod just to put the energy back so you have the means to attack and yeah, so I mean, just, just one energy, you know, you're not going to put back even more. Yeah, this is very tactical from Gabriel. wants to just maximize his outs off of something like Iono to give himself the best chance to draw what he needs. But again, does not draw that Awakening Drum. Maybe Gabriel put the card counts in his deck like he wanted to, hoping that he would find that Awakening Drum to draw him into everything that he needs. We will just see Venge's Fletching taking the knockout, and there are now a lot of Ancient cards in the discard pile for, ben for Gabriel. Benny is in a super solid spot, though, I feel. Yeah. If he can play something like an Iono and has something like Hero's Cave, this could be what he needs to get back into it. But I don't think he has... Either of those pieces we're going to see as he checks through the deck is the Hero's Cape there, and it, it is. is, and you see it being queued to the top, and he knows that this is what he needs to find to make sure his Charizard EX does not get knocked out. And yeah, this is where you have to wonder. Maybe he had to just you know, play your luck and bring back the boss's orders, because I think, like you mentioned, Ethan, I don't think there's any way for Gabriel to play around his Hero's Cape's Charizard. No, there isn't. It's so tough. I think... Maybe if that Ancient Drum is still in your deck, I mean, there's only a 33% chance that you draw it, then maybe you put Boss back. Because if you have something like a Pokestop in hand, you can just try and thin or maybe use one more Concealed Cards ability. I think Benny is just going to make sure he has count of all of the resources available. I think the biggest concern here, though, for Benny, and maybe the reason that Gabrielle put these back in is, again, Counter Catcher is still an option for Gabrielle. So oh, Benny's wait, biggest... got it? No, I don't. I think Countercatcher is still the. Yeah, the Countercatcher is in the hand, it oh, looks like. Okay. Or we know it's in the discard pile. Hold on, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that, that's what so that's hard. Saying, yeah. But don't forget, though, it's not just the one copy. Oh, there are is, two in the deck. Okay. So this is the tough situation right. for Benny is do you grab the Hero's Cape or do you grab Iono? And I think with how this ends up working out, you have to be very, very careful. The Lost City will remove one card from the deck, or rather from the discard pile. There's a lot going on, Freya. It's going to come <laughs> down to this turn here. It is going to go down to this one here, and yeah, the, the, like, so I think I was just, my whole train of logic was assuming that there was only one count, the counter catcher, no, there's two, so this absolutely is it, it's the key turn. And here we go, this is Benny's best play, he's going to go ahead and take the knockout with Burning Darkness, going down to one prize card, Gabrielle's going to promote this, and buy the Poke Gear. Gear that can guarantee the game, I think, Gabrielle has all the pieces he needs, has the Poke Gear, we'll just play it, find the Explorer's Guidance, and we'll get to look at the rest of the deck, if Gabriel can find himself an energy card and one of those counter catcher, he can bring up one of these benched two prize Pokemon. Let's see if it's there. Get it's by there. both the counter catcher and the dark energy, the back-to-back -back international champion, Gabriel Fernandez wins it all in Europe.
And that, that is why Gabriel stepped down on stage and we are here just so seeing the lines and you know, doing the optimal plays to put back the Explorer's Guidance and with the counter catcher and the energy sealing himself as the seniors champion here at EUIC. Wow, what a phenomenal set. The beginning of a seniors dynasty winning the three biggest tournaments back to back to back. The three beat for Gabriel Fernandez. What a win with a deck that a lot of people may not have expected to go all the distance, no matter what age division. Now, you've got two flying partners. You've got your flying partner with Lugia. Yep. You've got now your, I guess, uh, Maridon floats a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. For him. And then you, of course, also got your Roaring Moon, Karidon as well. You've got a bunch of great Pokemon. Another great accolade to add to the list for Vinny Fernandez. What a phenomenal player, what a phenomenal deck, what a phenomenal match, what a phenomenal tournament this has been, even, oh my goodness, I just cannot believe that we got to be a part of this. This has been an absolutely amazing European Internationals. Yeah, and Benny gave it his all. He really just looked to see what he could do in that game. So, so close, but still gonna walk away with a lot of championship points. That will help for the stipend, and of course, a good sum of money as well. And if anything, more motivation to eventually get that international title in the seniors division. And you see he is absolutely over the moon. Look back to his family and just... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he's saying there, but yeah, just sort of shouting back to the family and all the support in the crowd. He's got to be feeling absolutely over the moon himself. And uh, yeah, let's take a look back at that incredible set, Ethan. I mean, wow, I... You know, given what Gabriel said at the start, he was worried that, you know, his child was going to have a few more tricks and it was going to be a little bit tricky to go up against. I think uh, Gabriel put on a phenomenal display there. Yeah, these were two incredible competitors. Didn't matter that they were in the seniors division. This was the level of competition we could see in the masters division. I'm sure these players will be giving it their all. That game one, though, just super tough off of the Pokestop. And even in game two as well, just you kind of imagine, right? Benny had to use that extra turn to instant charge. If he maybe takes that one extra prize card, he's in a pretty good spot there to win that game number two. Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, like really... Wow, again, I know it's all game one here, but really just all it came down to was just evaluating that line and uh, just, you know, making sure that he uh, could put together everything right there at the end with the counter catcher and the force guiders and the energy to win. There is more that Pokey orders. Gear, yeah. yeah. At game one, Pokey Gear, big to find that final boss's orders. You see, even though there's no prime catcher in this deck, it's super important that Gabriel's playing multiple copies of these gusting cards throughout the end was just able to expertly manage his resource. That extra turn to use Explorer's Guidance allowed him to build up his hand, build up his discard pile, and then the Sada's Vitality made sure that Gabriel was always in a position to use that final support of that Explorer's Guidance to find the pieces he needed to close it out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the ancient cards uh, build up more and more and more. Gabriel, just, you, you literally see there on the replay, just going through the maps in his head, uh, trying to work it out there, taking that knockout on the Charizard DX, which of course was really, really big. That was the first big two prize knockout. The, the response for the Charizard there, and then uh, just and I found over that final Poke Gear. Finding, oh no, sorry, that was the one where I found the Sada, of course, and uh, yeah, just loading up his attacker so you can chain them uh, over and over again really, really nicely. Just uh, set up that Charizard uh, with a bit more damage. Benny very cleverly going for the retreat and uh, you know, just leaving that, uh, or rather, Gabriel bringing up the Radiant Charizard for a KO, and then with that final Poke Gear off the top deck, finding the Explorer's Guidance to find the energy and the counter catcher to become the European International Champion. Back to back, Vinny Fernandez doing it here in Europe. He's an international champion two times this season. Let's throw it down to the stage and hear from him. Let's hear it for our 2023 Senior Division European International Champion, Gabriel Fernandez! What an incredible game, what a moment. You were not feeling the most confident going into this matchup. It seemed like your opponent had a lot of answers for what your deck had to bring to the table. How were you able to navigate things to be the one to, came out, uh, to come out on top? So game one, I was a little nervous because I pokey stopped and I knew two. So I didn't have any stadiums, but he wasn't able to get the lost city. He also prize rode him, which made things a little e easier for me. But game two, we just went head to head and I ended up top decking the Poke Gear. I had a lot of outs, I had the energy to Greninja, but I ended up inning, winning, thankfully. Yeah, and in that game number two, you took a little while on that last decision from the uh, Pow Pad on the second to last turn. You were really thinking about putting back the ex double, you know, Explorer's card. 
or putting back a boss's orders. What led to your ultimate decision to put back two of that new ancient supporter? So I tested this matchup with my brother. We knew the counter catchers are so powerful in this matchup. So I knew I could put back the boss, but if I top deck that, it wasn't gonna make me win. So the explorer was better and it ended up making me win. Yeah, it's what you got and it found you the energy and the counter catcher you needed more than just the gusting effect, you needed two pieces. You won the World Championships. You won the Latin America International Championships, and now you are the European International Champion. How have you been able to find such a consistent level of success? I mean, I'm going to NAIC, so hopefully I'll win that as well. But yeah, it's just like, be consistent, don't be nervous. Like I always say, practice and just play the game. It's Pokemon, we love this. Absolutely. Great words from our champion. One more time for Gabriel Fernandez. I know you have quite the crew here traveling with you from Brazil. Who's out here in the audience rooting for you? I want to give a shout out to my family, my dad, my mom, and my brother. My brother created the base list. He played it on round one on the stream on Masters. You guys saw a little bit of that too. I'm gonna give a shout out to Celinho, who borrowed me a Fluttermain in Spanish. That was very cool as well. And my last Swiss round opponent who honored our agreement. 